What's up guys and welcome back to the SLI invitation. We have IGV going up against CDEC from the upper bracket and uh, well the current standing of the tournament winner of this has a date with VG loser drops down to uh, well to losers and they're gonna be facing up against eHome key and that's gonna be happening I believe right after this. So they gotta play two in a row which is not fun for them trust me that is like that's not cool when like the winner gets to chill for at least another day and loser has to play two in a row after already having lost feels pretty bad man of course gonna be your caster for today starting i don't know right really late it's 1 a.m right now i don't think we can call it bright and early because it's uh currently completely dark outside but hey we just have to make sure not to uh scream so loud as to disturb the neighbors because if we get the cops called on us then the cast is kind of ruined but uh cdc ig vitality both i would say fairly evenly matched overall. The uh, only problem is that there's a Nexus Assassin on the field. Now, Nexus Assassin is a hero that I haven't seen in a very long time because he's always banned. <clears throat> like, I've seen Monkey King get through, I've seen Magnus get through, I've not yet seen Nexus Assassin get through. So, uh, I mean, the hero is is kind of finicky insofar as, yes, he is it's very uh, hard to kill in the lane as far as off laners are concerned, is is going to do a pretty good job at staying alive in there, but uh, even should he get a couple of levels, Vendetta ganking around is threatening, but it's uh, something that IG Vitality can deal with. Sentries, of course, and just general map awareness. Uh, Earth Spirit is definitely a good way to go as well. Just having a hero that is most likely going to be roaming around the map means that Nyx Assassin is going to have to always maybe deal with that one extra hero in that Earth Spirit, so it is a very powerful pick for sure. Lots of Chinese teams, uh, all Chinese teams, have Nyx in their target for the uh, first vein, it seems like, but uh, he's going to get through this time, and we'll see if CDEC are able to abuse this hero. To what degree they're able to abuse this hero with an Invoker, uh, just a one-two punch as far as the ganking party is concerned, uh, does make the Nyx Assassin a lot, lot stronger. And Assassin right now isn't really that great uh, up against the Earth Spirit and the Juggernaut. His survival with Spike Carapace is, uh, well, let's say mediocre. Versus the Juggernaut spin, Spike Carapace isn't exactly all that strong. So the Nick Assassin, if it is going to be versus the Juggernaut, should be tough times. IGB's opening is fairly standard. Juggernaut, Earth Spirit. Uh, I think IGV are one of the teams that uh, plays CM pretty highly. Uh, some teams just just don't, whereas other teams will sometimes first pick it. So uh, you know, there's there's really no way to know beforehand except for just you know doing all the homework. And I think I've seen IG Vitality pick up CM occasionally, but not nearly as much as uh, IG proper, who pick it up like all the time. I mean, CM right now seems just perfectly realistic. Is kind of food for an assassin is gonna struggle to deal with an invoker in the mid late stages. But mana for for the Juggernaut, mana for Earth Spirit, mana against. An invoker who may be dropping a couple of a uh, a couple of EMPs, a couple of mana burns coming your way could go a long way for IG Vitality to stay in those lanes and not just get run over because they don't have. Any for right now, though, IG Vitality going to get rid of the heroes that will trouble the Juggernaut. Pretty much impossible to kill off a Weaver and Ursa, and hey, look at that! It's almost like Crystal Maiden's a standard pick. Uh, these are, yeah, the two bands from IGV are just heroes that Juggernaut can't insta-kill. Two cores uh, that Juggernaut can't insta-kill with an Omni Slash. There are always going to be cores that you can't kill, but uh, you know, those are probably the two of the most. Offlane for IG Vitality is looking a little bit slim, honestly. Nyx Assassin is, uh, of course, out. Centaur, Sand King, Magnus, all out as well. And you don't really want to be scraping the bottom of the barrel for offlaners. Those uh, are heroes that can get uh, fairly weak if you're not already prepared. And they can always go for a clockwork or something like that. So it doesn't seem too terrible at this stage, but uh, yeah, for IG Vitality, that should probably be their fourth pick. On the CDEC squad, in the meantime, we'll two already powerful heroes up on their end. Uh, Roamers, Treant is still in. Nyx Treant and Voker is certainly very powerful. IGV have kind of average ways of getting through living armor, but they're going to opt for a warlock instead. I think that's uh, probably just as safe. I mean, the ultimate babysitter, that warlock. Now the uh, offlaner knows that they're going to be poked at, right? Imagine that. Someone like a puck isn't really, uh, for, for offlane, 
isn't really going to be incredible versus an assassin. Uh, a Badden is actually still in, so uh, if IGV want a solid offlaner, comes with my highest recommendations. Wow, it's almost like I've seen IG Vitality play before. This is incredible. That's incredible. Okay, well, I mean, uh, mid lane for IGV, I think they would want to have a Shadow Fiend, but then they're not going to get it, and they're going to take a TA. Eh, I got it right up here, guys. I see it. I see it in the future. I'll see the EC for right now. Uh, I mean, they have poking power for a bad, and they don't have kill power for this guy. Uh, Slark is another hero that they can pick up that the Juggernaut will struggle to kill with an Omni Slash, and is actually kind of hard to kill in general from the IGV squad. You know, Baden is uh, yeah very disruptive, but as far as killing off Slarks is concerned, that is not what he does, man. Earth Spirit, kind of the same thing. You roll into a Slark, and uh, you may be able to block a. Pet yeah, you will. You don't have to deal with that. It's a Terrorblade. Terrorblade and Slark. Wow. I don't think so. Pro probably not. I think my mic might be a little bit too loud. We're going to drop that by just a little bit. But Rubik banned out. Uh, I mean, they're just looking for heroes that may make Abaddon's life a little bit more difficult in lane. Uh, the Shadow Fiend's going to be banned out right here. Calling it. But as far as supports to lock out a Baden, if you really want to lock out a Baden, you you go for an AA, which is uh, really bad with Warlock as a duo support, but uh, really good up against a Baden and Juggernaut. I don't know how many teams are actually going to be doing that because the AA is you know outside of his ultimate, well, even with his ultimate, he's he's kind of a bad hero. Let's let's be honest here. Uh, but uh, yeah, that that is actually a really good hero to have versus an Abaddon if it does come down to it. Support pickup from the CDEC side. They have only real one good stun on the Nick Assassin. Ogre Magi. Uh, Visage is not actually too terrible. Whoa, it's a Tide Hunter. It's a support next. Okay. Well, there's, uh, I think, what we call a curveball. In the business, that's called a curveball. And uh, this is not going to change the fact that uh, IGV want to just, uh, you know, pick up a, a mid lane. Damn it. I was so close, guys. I was so close. IGV in the palm of my hand, and I missed out. I mean, it's Alina. I mean, it's. It's fair. You have Crystal Maiden and Earth Spirit on your team. So Lena, as far as killing off Invoker, it's a cakewalk for her. It's more magic damage as opposed to uh, TA, who's physical versus Terrorblade. You obviously want to have the magical burst. So yeah, I probably should have seen that one coming, but uh, you know, 2 out of 3, 66 is still a passing grade, so yeah, take that. The CDC grabbing a Tidehunter, definitely very interesting. Uh, as far as killing off Tide, Juggernaut definitely a hero you want to have. But Tidehunter is uh, mostly just like a, a kind of a mid-game threat as far as creating space is concerned. Like between that and the Warlock, IG Vitality are going to be very, very cautious at going in. And if you're not going in, then you're probably going to be uh, scoped out by a Nyx Assassin. So it creates this uh, position where, for IG Vitality, they either have to fully commit, say, YOLO, you got Ravage, you got Chaotic Offering, we don't care, let's do this. Or they're going to open themselves up to Nick's Assassin play. Not really sure which one is safer, honestly. <laughs> they both don't really seem like incredible uh, incredible plans there for IGV, but uh, what else is there to do? Outside of that, though, IGV do have much more power in their early stage. No one from the dire loaded in. Feels bad, man. Uh, freeze, please. All right. Uh, no one on the dire loaded in, but uh, IG Vitality, they have a lot more early game potential. I mean, they have a Crystal Maiden who most likely is going to be able to safely get to level 3, level 4 in the jungle. They uh, have an Earth Spirit, obviously, and for CDEC, uh, Warlock is not exactly what I would call a uh, dangerous roamer hero. Dogfights is going to get into a little bit of a fight, but I mean, Nick Assassin is 
going to be uh, played by June, but uh, you know, I don't really see any of these heroes roaming around to the degree of an Earth Spirit, to the degree of a Crystal Maiden. Of course, once she gets those couple of levels, and uh, yeah, I don't see anyone from CDC stopping her from getting those couple of levels. I haven't seen a single team try to pressure a CM uh, pretty much at all. It's pretty quick, just Frostbite jungling, but uh, yeah, you would expect like at one point a Ricky or something would be like, yo, CM? I'm just gonna go mess with her. I'm just gonna go steal her last hits. I'm just gonna go hit her a couple orb of venom. She has 280 movement speed. That'll drop a little bit more. She's you know slowest by far once orb of venom touches. Not gonna happen just yet. Either way, we are in game one of a best of three. Already some uh, perfect world frame rate lag. Please, please, not today, not again. You're gonna have super playing the crystal maiden paparazzi on the juggernaut the most classic of lane combos, if it is actually going to be like that. Dogfights is on the Earth Spirit, we got Sakata playing the lead end up towards top lane, it's going to be in July on the Abaddon, up against the Abaddon, it is going to be Flyby playing the Terror Blade. supporting him is going to be Demons on the Warlock, how fitting is that? 10 out of 10, Wood Warlock again, Shade is on the Invoker, we got June roaming down towards the bottom as the Nyx Assassin Sep Sep is on the Tide, it's a dual lane Nyx Tide. Really now, uh, well, this is going to place a little bit extra pressure on the CM simply because you don't really want to leave Juggernaut up against the two of these guys for an extended period of time. Can get pretty rough pretty quickly. CM really doesn't want to be here. Most likely she's going to try to duck into the jungle and Dogfights is going to be the uh, sole support to that poor melee support up against these two uh, pretty much impossible to harass heroes. Right, we see the uh, CM's attempts being blocked there. Now, this is going to be a lane where the Juggernauts, yeah, is going up against two melees, so if all alone on an island, and for whatever reason has no mana, he'll be in a bad spot, but Anchor Smash versus Juggernaut really isn't the most dangerous thing in the world, just because, yeah, he will be blast hit during that time very easily, but Blade Fury is a spell, so, uh, yeah, they don't really have to worry too much about this. Man, wouldn't it be a bummer if, like, the... Friggin' first time I see Nick Sasson in a million years because he's always first banned, and then he just doesn't do anything the entire game, and it's just a wasted pick. He's gonna get rolled into. There is a Frostbite. Oh, but it's gonna get stunned out beforehand. Still, June takes a lot of damage, but this is a Nick Assassin, so uh, he has Ice Frog's Blessing of Extra Regeneration. That's actually what, it call what it's called, guys. I write that down. Yeah, he's gonna be back at top <laughs> HP really quickly, plus... He has a haste rune, plus he has a shrine, so uh, Nyx Assassin is definitely a bug that IG Vitality, at least for right now, if they're not able to chain stun him, or uh, I guess kind of chain disable him, the roll in and the frostbite, then they're, they're really going to struggle to kill him off, period. But similarly up towards top lane in July, he went for the, uh, the sword level 1, just to run at and harass the uh, enemy terror blade, and he's doing some pretty good work versus demons as well. Uh, it's really, really hard to out damage a Shadow Word from a Warlock, even though you have wow level two advan a two level advantage over said Warlock. Yeah, it's uh, the Baden who's going to be tough to kill, very hard for CDEC to kill. But at the same time, once Menmorphs is up, you gotta respect that Terra Blade. You have to respect the poking power of Warlock. The damage adds up very, very quickly. And then we have a mid lane where uh, most likely it's just going to be Sakata with a pretty nice advantage. Right now, Invoker is going to mix in a little bit of that alacrity, try to counteract a little bit of a base damage and range disadvantage. And he should be fine for uh, for a little while here, but I mean, the Lina versus Invoker lane is already pretty favored for the Lina, at least for the first, like, four or five levels. And uh, then, yeah, you'll be able to CS, but you also have to watch out for Laguna Blade, and you also have to watch out for another Dragon Slave. One more right click from downtown! We'll get Sakata the First Blood. I was going to say, like, she already has a favorite matchup, clearly, you know, like that. She could do stuff like that, and Invoker really can't return fires in a substantial manner. Sakata is most likely to have heroes rotating into her lane, plus she's got this little thing called Arcane Aura. So Alina with extra mana is, uh, well, is going to turn into more Dragon Slaves, which turns into Invoker, who only has one point in Quas, taking a hell of a lot of damage. Not fun, let me tell you guys. In July, in a little bit of trouble, upheaval for the first time ever used, and uh, we'll, we'll do nothing. Uh, people sometimes use, but oh man, Paparazzi getting a kill on Sep in the meantime, that's just a clean roll-in spin. Why am I looking at in July? He's never gonna die, I should know that. Tidehunter, as I said, not really 
a great hero to have versus Juggernaut, which I'm kind of surprised. I mean, Nick Assassin, again, isn't that much better. Spike Carapace does jack all up against a, a Juggernaut spin, but uh, Tidehunter, the only thing he really has going for him right now is just inherent tankiness, which is quite a bit. 700 HP is, is a lot for a level 4 hero. I guess 800 now, but uh, Juggernaut spin is a real tool as well. Anchor Smash, nice Anchor Smash, bro. You're going to take half, a little bit more than half, yeah, from a little bit of mana expense. And he has a clarity, and he's uh, now in a dual lane, so pushing his way towards level 6 pretty quickly. Which of course means Omni Slash, not fun for a Tide Hunter. CM, level 3, roaming out already. We usually see CMs try to get to uh, one more point in Arcane Aura before they really make any aggressive moves, but once it's kind of dominating the lane this hard, and looking to be in a pretty good spot. Spike, the spike is gonna land. Meteor drops onto Sakata, but with the frostbite onto the Invoker, is gonna get bowled over by a Dragon Slave. Now LSA onto the Nyx Assassin. There is a Laguna Blade. Couple more right clicks. Shrine. How balanced is it? Looks like not balanced enough, and it will not heal out the Nyx Assassin. Sakata's damage output is uh, is silly right now. She's level six, five thirty into the game, and killed off the Invoker twice. CDEC got baited. They did not know that there was a Crystal Maiden there. If there wasn't a Crystal Maiden, Sakata probably would have just been beaten down by this Nyx Invoker combo. But man, Frostbite is, is the real deal. In before CM nerfed in the next patch, and she's never seen again. Oh, well, speaking of never seen again, Shade might be taking a little bit of trip to the grave. Deafening Blast, <laughs> a very low level of it. And, well, they're gonna take some tower shots. Couple two men to actually be forced away before they can get the finishing blow. One more, last, one more right click in there. And Shade probably would have fallen, but uh, he has a shrine. I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't already used this shrine, CDC. It seems like they, you know, the Tidehunter at least, would have uh, cracked into it already. This tower though, only six minutes in gonna be denied yeah, that's uh, pretty nice and with the Sun Strike will also kill off Sakata you know the year lane was going incredibly well as the Lina but that kind of uh, that kind of puts a damper in things and she, still she's gonna be able to return and do a hell of a lot but uh, she's a little bit sadder while she does so fly by is gonna get jumped by dogfights up towards top has a kick available CM lands a frostbite <laughs> upheaval nice upheaval Sundra onto super is gonna get fly by back up to full HP but super's not gonna die just yet unless this reflection does her in no they will turn around and kill off in July they force a level 6 Sundra on Terror Blade uh, which isn't really a terrible thing but uh, yeah usually you don't see that until like level 9 they're going to root up the assassin he has by carapace which will slow down Sakata just a touch and that actually with the impale will get him out to the north and to safety Mic too loud? All right, guys, I'll drop my mic a little bit. Drop my mic. We'll raise the we'll raise the game volume. We'll try to balance this out. I mean, you guys have heard this game before, but you guys have not heard me before. Come on, man. Great survival by the Nyx Assassin, but uh, that's just him not dying. Not dying in a game is sometimes just not enough. Dog fights. What if you could see that through the trees? Spilling over a little bit. Will get his bounty rune stolen. I mean, they are applying quite a bit of pressure to fly by. Sunder, again, usually not picked up until much later. It's usually not as powerful as extra points in image or metamorphosis. And 200 mana for a hero like Terrorblade is, is actually a lot. He doesn't expend the most mana, but 200 is. <laughs> That's a big number, guys. Gonna roll in and find demons. Did that hit? I don't know. Thanks, Perfect World Lag. The Curse of Avernus is going to be applied. Demons has only level 1 heal. He went for 2 points in upheaval. Dragon Slave didn't even hit. This is not a Warlock build that you see very often. Uh, I actually am not really sure why he went for this build. I mean, it is very good if your Abaddon is up against... Or if your uh, Terrorblade, rather, is up against absolutely nobody, right? Like a 1v0 lane then sure, you don't really need Shadow Word, but uh, upheaval up against an Earth Spirit is most likely not going to stay live for very long. 
a Juggernaut can spin, a Crystal Maiden can frost you. Uh, yeah, I don't really know if I like this. I mean, it is very powerful with Terror Blade. If Terror Blade, you know, has the Metamorphosis up, has a couple of illusions, and enemies are walking in soup, then, yeah, you're probably going to get those kills, but are you really picking up a Warlock for upheaval? No, that's like the last thing you pick up Warlock for, man. You pick him up because he has Poking Power, because he has Shadow Word, and you point of it. It's not like multiple points would have saved him there. I think he was fairly screwed, but... Yeah, it's uh, interesting to see the Warlock, who usually is going to be hurting for experience, kind of throw one extra point into the upheaval. In before I shit talk upheaval, and then he drops it in a team fight with Ravage, and then IG Vitality just they don't have any cooldowns because of an EMP or something like that, and they all get wiped. I think I may have cursed them. That may have just happened. Lina, 10 minutes in the game, Bloodstone, starting to be built, double nulls already, plus Soul Ring. I think she has enough mana, level 2 aura at this point. Ooh, Crystal Maiden mixing things up a little bit, mixing in a couple points in aura. I mean, that's one of the great things about CM is that uh, the builds, uh, I mean, the levels 1 through 3 is usually pretty streamlined, but everything after that, you can just play it by ear. Nova, roll in from dogfights. There is, of course, a Sunder, but no mana actually on the Terror Blade. How does Terror Blade run out of mana? 200 is a pretty big number. I said it before, guys. Fly by down again. I can raise the uh, game volume a little bit more, guys. I have to go into the settings somewhere. Audio. Okay. That should be that should be a little bit better. That should be a little bit better for you guys. There's a five minute delay on the stream, so uh, anything I do is going to be <laughs> maybe uh, seen a little bit too late before I do something else. Oh, Sep. He's going to run into a pretty mean gank squad. Ravage might get him out of this, but never mind. <laughs> Sakata's damage output way too high. The Curse of Avernus, level 3 at this point. Actually does quite a bit with the Lina on your team. Even with only level 1 Fiery Souls, even with the stacks not full, it's just... <laughs> Lina, with this much farm, is going to be uh, going into a period in the game where she's actually uh, a pretty relevant right-clicker. Even up against you know high armor heroes, tanky heroes, Terra Blade, Nyx Assassin, Tide. Another tower to fall over towards mid lane. Oh, Shade gets killed off and tower denied. Now, where have I seen that before? So, all's fair over in the mid lane, but over towards bottom lane, we have a little bit of an issue. Paparazzi has three points in Healing Ward in July, three points in that curse. Uh, they are going to get wrapped around by the Nyx Assassin. Sentries are not in the area. So June has a chance for Paparazzi here. Straight Spike. I don't think he has a chance to Vendetta. Oh, no, he actually does. And with the Ravage Chain Stun, Juggernaut is not going to get a spin. Nor the Omni Slash off. Demons is going to come in from the side. Drops a rock onto two, but he's going to get stunned up by Sakata. Just right clicks will kill him off. That Warlock ultimate, yes, will slow a couple down, but won't do much, except for kill off the Abaddon eventually. Borrow time already procced. Sakata and Super on their way out. Shade, what does he have? He has not much to throw into that. It's going to be a two for one with the rotation back in from the Lina. The Tidehunter and Nyx Assassin tag teaming that Juggernaut, who probably, I want to say, did not expect the uh, level six to be up on the Nyx Assassin. I think he just picked it up, and then he just now grabbed level 7 off of those couple of kills. So now there would probably be a lot more uh, detection on the ground. Dust is, eh, not exactly fantastic. If they're going to go for a push like that, that's kind of a slow push with a uh, with a Juggernaut and a, uh, a Baden. Going for Sentry is definitely preferable. Yeah, it's not going to be the best fight in the world for IGB. But still, the uh, success they're having elsewhere is usually going to be good enough dogfights. Scan. And well, it's red, so they know someone's there. They're, they know someone was there. Ripperino Nyx Assassin. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you guys are just going to have to deal with any mic issues. Deal with it. Five minute delay makes it too hard to change. Demons with the sickest spell in the game. And now he's in a lot of trouble because he's going to get kicked back into an Abaddon. Into Paparazzi's ultimate. 
Let's hear it for upheaval. Woo. Nice. Good work, upheaval. What a spell. Wow, our, our IGB really going for this. Holy crap, they're gonna go for high ground. They know that there's no Ravage. So they're just gonna say, okay, Tidehunter, you're kinda useless to us, to the enemy team right now. Let's just go for it. Wow, that, that's actually kind of baller, just going straight up high ground. 14 minutes in the game, no Terra Blade on their own end. I mean, Juggernaut's okay for pushing insofar as he has a healing ward. Uh, in July, of course, with that curse is, you know, okay at pushing as well, I guess, but they're not working with the Jakiro, they're not working with the Pugna, so uh, they're just trying to hope that someone is going to get really stupid and try to farm this bottom lane. You know this Tidehunter, just look at him, he wants this farm. And dogfights, trying to bait him in. Now this is unfortunately not going to work because this Observer Ward from CDC is going to see the vast majority of IGB still hanging around the area. So they will uh, you know, now take a green light to go in. There is Vendetta. Paparazzi spin. Don't need a spin. Why, why spin? You don't need to do that. Now he can spin offensively versus June. Warlock's ultimate does drop with the right clicks from Terror Blade. Paparazzi will survive at 20 HP. Nice upheaval. They'll all try to get away from it, except for In July, who kind of got caught already. Although, a couple of slows from the CM. June is not going to get frozen down. It's going to be the Golem instead. Another spike will land this time on CM, but the shield will quickly buff out. That's done. And everyone on IG Vitality will survive. They also snag the Invoker in the meantime, plus the Warlock Golem afterwards, plus the roll in for more. Kick onto two, just one. But still the Warlock is going to drop very low. Ravage is going to connect onto four heroes. Follow-up with a two-man spike is great against Paparazzi especially. They get the kill. Sakata does not have a Laguna Blade right now. There is a Sunder on TB, but the right clicks, not quite enough. He Sunders Demons. That actually almost kills him off. Okay, looks like with the reflection they're gonna try to look for Sakata, but not gonna happen just yet. She has another Laguna coming up soon. And that will be that. CDEC turned things around with that Ravage into Impale stun combo. But still their Invoker was not involved in any of that. Got picked off pretty much first thing. He does have a hand of Midas, but uh, Midas is a little bit weaker for Invoker nowadays. A hero that needs experience over gold. One of the few in the game that would prefer just infinite experience over infinite gold. Into the Roche Pit, IGV. Abusing this, this Tidehunter. Poking at bottom lane high ground, knowing that Ravage is down. Now poking towards Roche. Healing Ward is up. Again, Curse of Avernus does quite a lot of work here. And they will randomly kick a rock, stun up a warlock. Sep can sit here all he wants to. He's not going to do anything if he really tries to go in here. Nyx Assassin will be spotted by this Observer Sentry combo if he tries to get in. So, yeah, I mean, the Ravage is used, but, I mean, it's a pretty classic Tidehunter Enigma problem, right? It's like, use your ultimate, win slightly, but then the next upcoming minutes where you have no Ravage, really, really awkward, because Tidehunter, though, he does have a mechanism doesn't really have that much threat. Like, he's definitely a hero that IGV can either completely ignore or drop a dogfight silent stun on and then just not touch for the rest of the fight. So IGV, the, uh, they take like slightly worse team fights every single time. Or, no, not every single time, but a handful of times. But still they're going to find themselves with a lot of momentum, still a little bit of a lead, and with freedom to do whatever the hell they want, which is, I guess, kind of in the same department as momentum, right? He turns sounds to 100% and mic to zero. I probably can. You guys will enjoy that. There, there it was right there. Did you, did you hear it? Did you guys like that? It was pretty good, wasn't it? I enjoyed it. Lena is stacked out of her mind. My God, what is this? Boots of Travels, Shadow Blade. What talent? Selection, damage, and damage. Uh, I actually really like the uh, LSA into their LSA damage into right click. I feel like that, especially with the Curse of Avernus, is going to do just so much for your Lena's scaling. Whereas respawn time, I mean, you don't need respawn time if you're never going to die, right? Bottom lane is being pushed, terribly illusions. Should have this one in the bag. Probably not even worth IGV making the movement down there. They're going to give up the tower in exchange for a tier 2 top. And look at this itemization for IGV. They do have a Hand of Midas on the Abaddon. At this point, uh, you know, pretty standard stuff for the hero. 
Paparazzi gonna go for an S and Y into Maelstrom. These are your kind of cheaper, cost-effective items coming up from the Juggernaut. Not gonna go Glass Cannon into like Diffusal Manta or anything like that. Wants to mix in that strength. And because he's been kind of insta gibbs whenever the Ravage and Impale have been used, can't say that this is the wrong decision. But this does signify to me that IGV are not interested in playing this game for a long time. They want to take maybe a mediocre team fight around that enemy Ravage, but then pop right back up again. And at this point, with all the tier 2s down, look for a tier 3 to take down the shrine. And of course, open up the door for Raxes. Oh my god. Here's the upheaval. Paparazzi, he will teleport back and hold this bottom lane area. Walking up high ground into a Tidehunter with Blink Ravage? Not really sure if that's a great idea. So back off, get this Radiance up on in July. Radiance up against Terrorblade. Very difficult for TB to deal with until he completes his BKB, of course, which he will have very soon. Mischance also not the worst up against Invoker, who uh, mixes in quite a few right clicks in his spell combos. But also that just makes Injuli a, a hero that CDEC absolutely have to kill. And throwing around stun, he will help kill him off pretty quickly. Super will have his smoke popped. They know it's a Nyx Assassin because they had vision. Nyx Assassin will just wander right on by. The rest of the team position themselves around the only non-smoked hero, Sep, coming in, but that's a Tidehunter. They're going to respect it, or say, screw it, we're going to go for Shade. He's far away from his Tidehunter, they can't help him. Can they burst him down? Well, with the whiff LSA, I'm not sure. Laguna Blade, the damage, it's enough. Ravage is coming in onto a whole boatload of heroes. The right clicks go in, as well as the spike and the chaotic offering. Zakata's going to try to book it, but he's not going to get away from flyby. That's a four kill? No. The, ter the uh, Abaddon able to just narrowly make an escape there. As CDEC, they take a 1 for 3 exchange, 2 supports, and Alina with the Ravage and Chaotic Offering. Now, this is both good and bad for them. Again, they will take down a couple of heroes, get a little bit of extra cash. But Lina has a lot of Bloodstone charges, so she's back up already. She has a Shadow Blade, so she's already actually looking for blood. And the 2 supports haven't gone down our low level, so uh, they are also back up. With no Chaotic Offering, with no Ravage, CDC have lost all of their high ground defense. And a Warlock, they also lost the Warlock. This is a green light for IGV, and this is something that CDEC have to counter just by sending illusions down the lane. They have to very, very aggressively split push to try to make it so that IGV have their uh, hand forced into some other lane, but I'm not sure if IGV are going to take that bait. This creep wave is going to get obliterated. Sep is on the high ground. He has mechanism, but he's going to get worked down. Uh, they're going to not actually work him down at all. Paparazzi has an Aegis right now. He's going get, to get his ass kicked by Reflection. But he has Healing Ward. He has an Abaddon on his team for shields. And he has an Aegis Reclaim. Not exactly the best timing for this push as far as that's concerned. But Rock kicked in. Do pop one Shrine burst damage onto the Invoker. He's going to start chipping him down. Reflection and Upheaval. In July, kind of caught in a little bit of mud, is going to pop his ultimate, get a lack from it. That's also a long cooldown for an Abaddon. I mean, it's not that long for an ultimate, but it feels like forever. Maybe that's why they called it Borrow Time. Jump in from Sep. It's not going to save this tower. 30 seconds, 50 seconds for the big team fight ultimates. And IGV with no Aegis. Make a pretty aggressive play. But uh, knowing that there's no team fight ultimates, worst thing to happen is like a Nyx Assassin initiation onto an impale on two. It's not all that bad. They're gonna back off, let CDEC get their cooldowns, and IGV can take off the final objectives around the map. Shrine number one down, shrine number two probably will be taken shortly after. If IG Vitality are able to uh, keep picking off this invoker, having shade under farm makes it so that uh, at a certain point Tidehunter, Warlock combos. That will not be enough to win CDC a fight. And Lina's damage, Lina's ambush power. It definitely can kill off that Invoker. It definitely can kill off a Terror Blade. And is actually in a pretty good spot to do so. Although the vision, it is there. Seeing the Lina. There is no true sight on the Blink Dagger Tide. There's actually no dust here at all, so can't get him. Tide has a Ravage. They don't want to go up into this funnel. Unless Paparazzi does, that's really bold. Super is 
gonna get hit with the Ravage. Everyone, in fact, hit with the Ravage. Now the Chaotic offering the stun combos again. Perfect! As IG Vitality are going to get cleaned up. There goes the Lena. Earth Spirit stuck in the middle. Will also fall. Injali is gonna try to TP out. He will once again make it to a shrine. But CDEC, they stomp hard on IG Vitality. Huge team fight combos. And that is going to be CDC now with the green light to go in for some objectives of their own. Shade did not get picked off beforehand. Flybys, Metamorphosis Restoration. Still long enough to at least take this tower. Paparazzi has Alina coming in soon. They're going to try to make a play with no Ravage to worry about. Here comes the spin. It'll do very little damage in the grand scheme of things. They need a Laguna Blade to land a flyby, but he gets a Sunder off. And with the BKB, Laguna Blade will do nothing. In July, will fall right before his borrowed time comes back up. Freezing Field with the Glimmer Cape will do a little bit of damage here to Shade. Stun from the LSA will keep him locked in. He's also hit with the Magnetize, but they can't quite catch up to him. They miss the kick. They do still see him for a couple more seconds, but now he's going to grab a regen rune. Still Ghost Walked, and the dust runs out. And that is going to be that. CDEC, they take in a Baden, they lose nobody. And for IG Vitality, it looks like these uh, team fight ultimates are hitting just a little bit too hard. Again, the game plan of absorb a team loss and then take an objective immediately afterwards is not a bad one inherently. That is, of course, if your team fight loss is, you know, a one for two trade or something like that. Losing more than three heroes. Losing more than two heroes, actually, against that uh, tied Warlock combo makes it so that you have to fight that much harder. You have to get that much more in the way of objectives if you're going to uh, counterbalance that loss. What is this timer looking like? 30 seconds left for Tide. There's a Warlock upheaval, and IG Vitality will actually respect it. No kick or anything like that from dogfights. They now see him, and they will kick him now that they have the uh, creep vision. EMP. Tornado, not exactly on the mark, but if they can take Raxes right now, IGV can absorb that previous fight loss and say that they are happy with it. Uh, jump in from dogfights, nice kick onto two heroes. They want to kill off this Warlock Laguna Blade. One more hit's going to do it. They actually take down the Tidehunter instead. And kill, but I'm pretty sure they're okay with that. Sakata hit with the Meteor Cold Snap, Deafening Blast, lots of damage, not enough. Sunstrike off the mark. Rax is down, and CDEC, they have a Tidehunter Ravage, but they have no Tidehunter. IGV can call that one a pretty nice victory. This is definitely a back and forth game. And I don't really know what the metrics look like right now, but yeah, this is this is already showing an even game. It is pretty much completely even at this stage. Because C deck, they have their ultimates right now. Now if they whiff their ultimates, if they're not able to get a couple more kills with them, then suddenly they're in a really bad spot. Blink and pale, mana burn to Sunstrike. Boom. Lena is running out of Bloodstone charges, only at four at this point. Dogfights is gonna chase after the Nyx. Wow, look at all that Earth Spirit damage. Yeah, Lena running low on Bloodstone charges is actually a lot worse in this game than some others. Oh, they're gonna actually poke out of their base. Run into a Ravage, onto three heroes. Borrow time is there for the Abaddon, but these heroes don't have borrow time. Juggernaut and CM down in an instant in July. We will get caught in the tornado. Another great kick from the Earth Spirit, but I don't think that's enough to help out this Abaddon. He's going to go down as well. And for CDEC, they have Metamorphosis just freshly used. Mantis style up on the Terra Blade. They're going to look to equalize the Rax count. 30 seconds left for both the Juggernauts and the Abaddon. And they are going to slide bottom. Tier 3 just now taken. Sakata has a Laguna Blade level 3. They will have to buy back at least the Abaddon, but I don't know if that's going to do enough right now. Great stun onto 2. Great kick follow-up. The Laguna Blade, though, gets blocked by the BKB. And it does nothing. The Raxes will fall right into the middle of things with the spin, but fly by. He is still BKB'd. And Demons, upheaval to cover the retreat. Dogfights has no stun for it. Not yet, at least. And they will lose Raxes. One melee for one melee. One Rax down and the bottom lane versus mid. And as far as that trade is concerned, slightly, slightly better for CDEC. But uh, not really by a huge margin. But yeah, Bloodstone, really important in this game. You need to be able to respawn quickly if you're planning on losing team fights. And with only four Bloodstone charges, 
and no respawn talent. Zakata is working with a balanced respawn time. On Lina, say it ain't so. They will slide into the Roche pit, get a free one. CDEC, 50 seconds, 67 seconds. Will be uh, very fight weak. This seesaw battle is uh, very consistently seesawing back and forth. Usually it's not uh, not this constant where one team takes an objective and then the other team wins a team fight. Rinse repeat. But IGV, with this Aegis, have a much better shot at taking a good fight. As long as they're able to avoid tight bottlenecks. Super, Sunstrike, poor CM. It's a CM at the end of the day. But still, CDEC getting kills at all. While their uh, ultimates are not being used. is a big deal. An assassin's job right there. So far, just having a hero with Impale has been absolutely great for them. Paparazzi is going to get smoke revealed. Jump in. Tidehunter has a Ravage. There's a spin here for Paparazzi. It'll eat a Gush and a Tornado. Thinking about going back in. Not really sure about that one, dude. Here comes the Nyx Assassin with the follow-up. He'll get kicked out by Dogfights, but not far enough away. Gets a rock dropped on him. Now Dogfights. He overcommitted to save his Jug, and he didn't even do that. Just is there Ravage. Gonna connect only onto the Jug, but he is super dead. Already having expend buyback. Could this be the game right here? With no Juggernaut, IGV need this Lina to kill everyone by herself. No one else on the team is really able to do that much damage. The Abaddon didn't go for the Radiance at the end of the day. Went Solar Crest. Had that one for a while, but uh, yeah, I'm not really sure if they have enough firepower for flyby, especially if they lose their Lina. Gets glimmered, so she won't get immediately burst down. Shrine active as well. He's gonna turn around, try to go for Sep. Tornado is there from Shade. EMP on top of that. Scott is gonna BKB, try to hold his ground. Plus 50 damage is pretty strong, but flyby has a lot more than that, that's for sure. Although he's stunned up now, he's gonna Sunder, still stunned by the kick. Laguna Blade will get blocked by a Lincoln Spear. Yes, applied just in time by Shade. What a sick play! Shade's looking for a Sunder, will decide on June. Did he just kill off June? No, he didn't. The dust goes off. They see the Nyx, but they can't catch up to him. CDEC get another melee racks, and Juggernaut, he'll respawn to see his base in ruins. CDEC. Juggernaut coming in. He's gonna get tornadoed. Kind of a brave move there by Paparazzi. This is going to be very desperate times here for IGV. They do not lose the most of, of their base, but uh, still, it's not looking that great. They need to pick off a hero. They need to pick off this Terror Blade. That'll be absolutely huge if they're able to land an LSA here. It is going to land with the kick. Laguna Blade is available, but Lincoln Sphere, the heals, Manta Split, and he's out of there. Oh man, that is such a huge opportunity there from IGV. They need to be able to pick someone off right now. They need it to be a Warlock or a Tidehunter, a Nyx Assassin. Hell, at this point, anyone. And anyone is fine. They just need someone to die. They're stuck in the soup once again. It'll be cancelled. Range racks over in mid. That's... Who cares about that? They really... Oh, wow. What is Abaddon still doing in the enemy base? He's going to get his ultimate popped. Reflection going to slow him down a little bit more. Sep has Ravage in 10. This is something that CDEC can chase with. Sunstrike will almost connect. Spike will land. Abaddon is very soft at this stage. Here comes the Meteor Blast combo. That'll drop Abaddon super low. Off the south end flyby. Forced to use his BKB. Looking for a target. Can't quite find anyone. In July will actually still live. Surprisingly enough. This bottom lane though is not looking that hot. And Shade will snipe dogfights. In the meantime, off to the south. Sakata will have to teleport out. That is going to be a fight that CDEC are able to win without using any of their ults. And you guys know what that means. We've seen this enough times to know what the plan for CDEC is. Well, take Shrine first. Because it's a free bag of gold, why not? It's time for Ravage and Catech Offering once again to show their ugly mugs. I think they can afford to let Paparazzi go for this top lane. Uh, no, they can't. There's a tier 2. Well, that's unfortunate for CDEC. Have their ultimates. They really want to use them. But they can't really. Not yet. Paparazzi versus Invoker. He's gonna run in and 
Try to do some damage to the tower. Sunstrike is gonna get the kill! Oh, greed will consume us all. Paparazzi loses his life for a minute just trying to greed out for 100 damage on a tower. <laughs> I'm not really sure if that's worth it, bro. Now again, this tier 2 on top lane is going to be really nice for IGV. That uh, doesn't mean CDEC are not going to go for a walkabout. Fine in July and June. He's going to land a Vendetta hit after Gush. That's a lot of damage right there. They're going to look for the borrowed time pop. Nice upheaval. Can't quite get that ultimate out of the Abaddon. They didn't expend anything for it. Nothing relevant, actually, so who cares? Let the Abaddon walk this time. Now we'll be back by the time any high ground is in danger. But still, this tower is for sure going to die. Whenever a creep wave arrives, where are the creeps? Here we go. Backdoor protection. Still good enough. I wonder if Terrorblade, if he used Metamorphs there, can battle through backdoor protection. He'll have Metamorphs this another 10 seconds easy. Jump in, spike. June misses, but they do burn out a lot of Injulai's man, and now caught in the upheaval. They need to kick him really quickly. They do so. Up the ultimate from the Abaddon is going to go down, and they will jump in and slay demons. No chaotic offering. Now, they may not have that tool. They still have their Ravage, but it seems like CDC will decide not to push it. It's not like they have an Aegis or anything like that. They still have their ultimates, so there's no rush for them. Speaking of Roshan, still a long time. That's the great thing for CDC. They would love to use their ultimates if it means winning a team fight, but they're not in any rush to do so. Invoker Hand of Midas has been doing a lot of work recently, and that Lincoln Sphere especially, doing quite a bit. The Terra Blade also. Not over farming the Lina, but I have Scotty just for more stats to ensure he doesn't get insta killed in the future. Oh, Paparazzi is gonna not get hit with the spike and is going to almost kill off June. There is an Omni Slash here. Ravage, though, immediately with a Sunstrike combo. Whoo, baby, that's a good one. Dogfight's gonna try to teleport out of there. He will stick the landing before Shade can arrive. That will be a Juggernaut for a Ravage. Uh, Juggernaut does have a buyback, so IGV still can fight. If CDC don't land a good chaotic offering. But Shade, gonna find in July. Oh man, Ice Wall. You could shield yourself for some health, but versus Ice Wall, it doesn't do a hell of a lot. And now borrow time. How much time can he borrow? Well, with Sunstrike, oh, that's actually going to heal him, it looks like it. It was still good. Uh, he's not running to safety though, so <laughs> he's running and surviving, but he'll eventually get killed off here. Crystal Maiden is up to the north. She cannot help out here. Sakata is coming in. Maybe we'll get a cheese pick off here on Demons. There's a gem on the Tidehunter. They rock Sakata. Force out a BKB. Travel out. And they don't have anything to interrupt that. But in the meantime, Rat Dota by Flyby will get jumped by Dogfights and Super. A couple of supports trying to mess with the big bad TB. Sunstrike will land on Super. Jesus, a lot of damage on CM. Now this is pretty much all the big tools from CDEC used. Metamorphosis, Ravage, Chaotic Offering. With an Abaddon down, they have to claim a lot here. Otherwise, they may run into some issues. Paparazzi going to jump in towards Demons. Almost get the kills by himself. Will do so, but that's him chasing a Warlock for a long time. While the Raxes are being brought down. Shiva's from Cicada. The Raxes still focused down by Flyby. BKB now. They just want this building. They will get it. And now they'll take a Juggernaut if he's going to offer himself up like this. Can jump forward with no mana though, has no Omni. Can't do all that much. Flyby, kick. A little bit off the mark. June is out. Flyby has a Hurricane Pike, and this cliff area probably is out. Still has a Jug on his ass. But Jug, uh, even with that Mjolnir. Chase of the Sentry right here. Manta Split, Illusion of the Paparazzi. Does quite a bit, LSA. A little bit off the mark. Here comes a Tornado, which Paparazzi will dodge. But again, he's very low on mana. He will Shadow Blade back into safety. The gem is on Tide, I believe, and he is coming, but a little bit too slow. They'll find Sakata. Oh, that's such a big kill. Sakata is going to get stunned up. Now the gem is in the area, and they're going to take her down. One more right click. There we go. 74 seconds dead. No buyback. And Paparazzi is going to find Shade, but it doesn't look like it matters. Play the Benny Hill music. Paparazzi is not even going to get it. IG Vit. 
Almost there, just at the cusp. But the combos from CDEC were so good. That was like how many three-man Ravage Impales combos? At least three of them. At least three, with Chaotic Offering mixed in there as well, with Invoker damage, with Terror Blade, of course. Not under any fire because all of his enemies are stunned. That is uh, some pretty tight team play there from the CDEC squad, but we do, do see some signs of life here for IGB. So in this best of three, upper bracket, we are looking at a quite likely three-game set. Guys, I'm Mike Loris. It's been a pleasure casting this game for you guys. And I'll be right back in just a little bit for game two between IGV and CDEC.